Hey guys, so I'm over here in the woods tree hunting. I'm digging up some eastern red buds as seedlings, about a foot high, and I'm transferring them to my, uh, my nursery over here where I find perfectly symmetrical ornamental trees. I'll put them in there, keep them in there for two or three years, then either transfer them somewhere else on my property or sell them to other people looking for beautiful trees for their property. So while I was in the woods in which we're getting ready to return, I had the distinct feeling of being watched, not by what, I think that's no longer a question, but by how many. So I went to get the camera to get my six and I just so happened to notice when I came out of the woods. Ah, this beautiful rainbow. It's a double rainbow. It's been raining off and on all day, but there's definitely something in these woods. I don't know if they're trying to tell me to now that I'm out to stay out or if they miss me and they're telling me to come back in. Oh man, I felt that one. All right, let's get back in here and find us some trees. As always, make sure to get my six. Guys, this is definitely one of the creepiest times of day. The sun, as you can see, is starting to go down below the horizon back there. So you just get my six. I'm gonna be working here around you, around the camera. The focus, of course, is not on me and what I'm doing. It's what may or may not be watching. And again, like I said, not what. I think we've got that down. It's how many. Keep your eyes peeled. Here's what I'm after. See, I've got one, two, three, four, five so far. These are Eastern red bud trees. You can tell their, their leaves look a lot like um, spades on a deck of playing cards. These are the trees that get very beautiful purple blossoms in the early spring, which are actually edible. A lot of people have asked on the channel if I make jams or jellies out of them, I don't but you can. There's something moving around up there at that tree in front of the sun, as you can see. Boy, that's one of the best shots. Let's keep watching. So I've got five so far. I'm just gonna be digging around here, seeing if I can get some more. There's several around here. Huh, got something else I can show you too. I hadn't planned this, hold on. This will dispel another great myth once I show you this. Show you how futile human efforts are in so many ways. See this? What is it? Is it an alien's egg? Is it a pod of evil demons? No. It's called cedar apple rust. Actually, it leads to cedar apple rust. This is a fungus, okay? If you have fruit trees, especially apple trees, it affects pears, just about every kind of fruit. But uh, these have spores in them. This, this sort of fungus has a codependent, not codependent, um, what's the scientific term? That's a psychological term for dysfunctional humans, codependent. Um, When two organisms need each other to survive, it's whatever. I hadn't planned this, so the words eluded me. Didn't have time to Google it. You know what I'm talking about. Put it in the comments if you know. But the spores on here, uh, the fungus, uh, goes back and forth between cedar trees and apple trees, okay, to reproduce. So that's why it's called cedar apple rust what it creates that's the spots on your apples dark spots a lot of people don't like it it doesn't really affect the flavor of the apples it will stunt their growth and they're not as pretty to look at so a lot of people 
erroneously think that if you have apple trees on your property, if you're gonna plant an orchard, which we've planted several, they're like, you better cut down every cedar tree, even close to your apple orchard, or you're gonna get cedar apple rust. Look, if you do that, your efforts are in vain. You know why? Our orchards are a quarter of a mile away from where I am right now. I could have cut down every cedar tree within sight of those orchards. And then here's one over here in the forest that has one of these anyway. This can launch spores onto apple trees that might be two or three miles away from here. Okay, so if I cut down every cedar tree within sight of my property, I might have a neighbor with a cedar tree two miles away, or there might be a cedar tree in the forest two miles away that can still have these dangling on them that can get my apple trees affected anyway. So don't feel like you got to do all that unnecessary work of decimating all the cedar trees on your property if you have fruit trees. You're never going to get rid of these in such proximity that they cannot affect your apples. Keep watching. I'm going to get some more eastern red cedars. I heard something. Eastern red buds, not eastern red cedars. You might want to put your earbuds in and listen, but just as I knelt down there, I could have sworn I heard a growl up there. You know what? We can walk further up this ridge and get closer to the horizon. I saw a bunch of small eastern red buds up there just this morning. We might get a better shot of who or what is up there.
I know you can hear the rain dropping from the trees, but I can distinctly hear footsteps up here too. We've got quite a few for one day, 10 or 12. Got a beautiful little maple too, that'll do well in the nursery. Gotta get a lot of these smaller trees out from underneath this canopy here along the tree line. It gets really thick, they don't have a chance of growing. Get them down there in the nursery, and in a few years they'll be beautiful trees, about four to six feet tall. <clears throat> but I have gotten a distinct feeling the entire time we've been in these woods we've not been in here alone so thanks for being in here with me to watch him hurt it or they thanks for getting my six look right there square in the middle of the six we'll see you for more next time <laughs>